Okay, it's been exactly one year since I did my 2022 schedule and season prediction for the Bills, and I am eagerly excited to do it again, and I can't wait to listen to it, like, at the beginning of the season, middle of the season, right before the season, towards the end of the season. I'm sure I'll listen to this. I love listening to myself talk. I'm like a functioning narcissist in that way. That's like the only way I really like myself. Um, wow, that was kind of dark. Um, I'm going to listen to this for myself many times. I have no doubt. I have no idea how long and rambly this is going to get, but I love the Bills and I miss football. It's one of it's one of the things I'm really passionate about. It's one of the things I really enjoy watching. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward to, you know, discussing the 2023 offseason. Um, the 2022 season was rough, uh, how it ended at least. The ending was terrible. Bills were trash in the playoffs. Um, barely, barely beat a, you know, Dolphins team. They had no business playing as close as they did. And then they got their ass kicked in, in my opinion, one of the uglier losses in Sean McDermott's career uh, or just in general in the Bills playoff history. Um, yeah, I mean, a 17 point. I can't think of the last time a 17 point victory looked too close. Right. Isn't that nuts? When was the last time that happened? Between, Especially when it's a home team getting their ass kicked the way they did in the snow i mean it was awful it was awful um but we do have the bills kind of schedule is out free agency is done draft is done dust is is settled you know you your uh, opinions uh, the adversity uh, all the the madness that happens you know in an nfl season a crazy nfl season like we've never had before uh, for the bills at least. And that's crazy coming off of the 2020 and the 2021 season in which you had COVID causing players to be suspended, to miss games due to illness, all this and that. Right. Um, it's just, it's crazy. You know, it is wild, but as with every uh, off season, I kind of want to look at uh, how the roster is shaken up uh, before I, I go into how I think they'll do, you know, with their schedule coming out. Um, so, you know, Bills, unfortunately, as with every offseason, you do lose some players. Uh, in, in my opinion, you know, obviously, Cole Beasley, John Brown, Duke Johnson, players like that, you hate to see them go. They've been around for a while. You know, they've come and gone, literally. You, you know, you got guys like Cole Beasley and John Brown. Uh, you know, you also had guys like uh, Dean Marlowe um, and uh, good old Devin Singletary and Mike Love and Bobby Hart, Taiwan Jones, Jay Kumaro, players that have, you know, varying levels of significance. But really, there wasn't anybody that I looked at and was like, man, we are not going to be the same without them. From a tangible standpoint, although I will say, Devin Singletary, Isaiah McKenzie, Tremaine Edmonds, I will miss you all. Um, you know, Tremaine Edmonds was drafted the same same draft as Josh Allen. You know, they say uh, his 25 years of age is, you know, it is what it is, right? But in my opinion, I mean, the dude's been a fucking linebacker throwing his body out there for five years in a row. It won't be surprise. It wouldn't surprise me if he's done by age thirty. Anyway, um, football years is more important than age. Let me let me just let me just throw that out there. Um, but also, Devin Singletary. You know, was he the most productive guy in the world? No, not really. But you know, he still was somebody that I I really enjoyed watching. And if you ever need somebody to miss a tackle for you, Devin was that dude. I mean, for being like five foot six, he was that guy. Like five six two oh two oh five do as a unit um and then you also had like i said isaiah mckenzie i will miss the fuck out of those three guys all right isaiah mckenzie he made some plays there are some very memorable games um in which he just fucking stepped up i think in the 2021 game against the patriots he was fan fucking tastic right i absolutely i mean he was amazing um but you lose some players you also bring some players in right 
We lost Devin Singletary, but we also brought in Damian Harris, a pretty good player, um, really, in my opinion. Uh, in the backfield, you also bring in Latavius Murray. Um, now, these guys are subject to getting cut. I remember <laughs> having pretty high hopes for O.J. Howard last year, and then his ass didn't even make it through preseason. It wouldn't surprise me if one of these, between the two of them, probably Latavius Murray may, get, may not even make it <laughs> to the final roster, but we'll see. You never know. Um, but they also brought in Taylor Rapp, um, who was a uh, safety for the Rams. So, you know, that that's cool. I like that uh, pickup a lot. Uh, you also signed Connor McGovern to replace uh, Roger Saffold, who was honestly just kind of old. Um, and, you know, but he was probably uh, – Con Con Connor McGovern was actually the, the biggest pickup, right, for, for the Bills. Um, and, I mean, if you look at the game in which they lost, you know, they absolutely got murdered pretty much every side of the ball. So it, you, you kind of are a little skewed and you're a little, like, almost biased and emotional – um, about the team as a whole because they didn't run the ball well, they didn't pass block well, they didn't rush the passer well. So you kind of have to really take a step back. And, and football, with being such a small sample size, and even last year with DeMar Hamlin and all that shit that happened, um, you know, uh, the Bills only paid 18 games. So, and ultimately they finished the season similarly to how I thought they would. You know, they would win. So I think I what, predicted what twelve and five, and they won thirteen uh, or fourteen if you include the playoffs. And they lost to who I now consider to be the superior top dog in the AFC to the Bills. Uh, I still have them below the Chiefs. Um, I still think the Chiefs are the you know bread and butter of the NFL, uh, mainly Patrick Mahomes. But uh, with that being said, you know, still still a good year, but ultimately didn't really bring anybody back. Didn't really lose a whole lot of players, though, either. Um, it was kind of a, a reloading, if you will. And, you know, the Bills window is still very much open, right? I, I, I don't have any doubts about that. I don't have any qualms about who was or wasn't lost or gained in free agency, in the offseason, in the draft. Um, so... Speaking of the draft, right, when you pick 25th overall, you don't really have a ton of options in terms of, you know, being able to, to draft a player that's going to make impact right away. You know, they traded up last year to get Kyrie Elam. They traded up this year to get Dalton Kincaid, the tight end, out of Utah, which is an interesting pick. We'll see ultimately how, how it plays out. Um, but, I mean, this year the Bills – only drafted six players. I mean, they had a lot of picks, um, but they traded a fuck ton of them away. You know, they brought back D. Marlowe. That was a seventh round pick that they lost to Atlanta. Um, and they traded up a few times to, you know, draft uh, Kincaid. They also traded up to draft uh, Torrance, I believe, and Williams. So, you know, they, they wheeled and dealed um, in order to get some players. Um, but honestly, I mean, the Bills in the past have drafted many players that they've ended up cutting down the line. So I'm not super worried about that. Uh, if we can get something out of Kincaid and, you know, Torrance and Williams, really, the top three rounds, then that's a win. If you can get anything out of rounds, you know, four through seven, that's also a win, you know? Um and so, you know, we'll see what Justin Shorter ends up becoming out of Florida. But uh, we'll see also if Dorian Williams can, you know, slot in. Maybe if Terrell Bernard will get some more snaps as well uh, at linebacker, ultimately. Um, but looking forward, I'm sure Torrance will get some starting time. Really looking forward to seeing what they're going to do with Dalton Kincaid, the tight end from Utah who uh, is going to be kind of kind of slated in there with Dawson Knox. The way they're saying it is, you know, it's another weapon for, for Josh Allen. You can never have too many weapons. Uh, and, I, and I would say that that's, that's more or less true. Um, and, you know, they're not realistically going to be able to light the world on fire um, and get a pass rusher um, that early in the draft without – or being where they're at in the draft, it, it's going to be really unreasonable for you to get 
a an impact player at the the big position of, of pass rusher that they need um because you know that that's really what's been their fucking achilles heel it's just been a legitimate pass rush and they've tried they have tried um and it's not their fucking fault that a guy like von miller who's fantastic and great and we love him and it produced as well as you could have expected a guy at his age to produce he gets fucking hurt i mean that shit just happens bro it's like it it, it just happens you know what i mean you, you just never fucking know um that shit can happen anytime uh, and so it, you know it's unfortunate and i wish you know they could have gotten a, a really really good pass rusher but you're gonna have to trade away your second round pick your third round pick to move into the top 15 top 10 to get a legitimate pass rusher in this draft that's gonna make an impact um because those motherfuckers don't grow on trees all right these max crosby's of the world these like mid-round picks or these like high first round picks that are like really good pass rushers they don't come around very often all right micah parsons nick bosa i mean both those guys were like top 10 top 15 picks i mean bosa was like second overall parsons was a fucking steal all right there are an infinite number of mid 20 round first round picks that just are kind of eh i mean look at greg russo hello he was not bad but not great and he probably will produce the same as he has the last two years where he's gonna give you a, you know maybe at his high end he'll give you eight to ten sacks but he's not going to be what von miller was in his prime and here's to hoping that you know von miller is bigger and better i mean medical technology has come a long way so here's to hoping that he comes back better than he was when he was hurt i don't know we'll see i mean they have state-of-the-art medical professionals to get those motherfuckers to to rock and roll with so much soul um but yeah, I, I can't wait to see what the fuck they do with Dahl and Kincaid because, I mean, Josh Allen, you know, uh, we still got Gabe Davis, right? He's coming into the final year of his rookie deal. Um, we still have Stefan Diggs, of course. But outside of those two, I mean, we still got Khalil Shakir, who unfortunately didn't blossom the way I was expecting him to the second half of the season. But, I mean, the Bills still have – they still have a pretty loaded offense, Right, Damian Harris, James Cook. That's cool. You still got Naeem Hines, right? And now you have Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox. Dawson Knox was already a top ten tight end. Um Yeah, I mean I don't know. Dalton Kincaid, he seems like an elite talent. Don't pass him up when they when they present themselves. Straight up. But anyway enough talk about last season let's talk about this upcoming season so last season i predicted 12 and uh 12 and 5 i predicted the bills would win their division so on and so forth however you know they went 13 and 3 demar hamlin thing happened they ultimately though did play out the way i thought they would uh, however with this upcoming season a lot has changed right not only did the Dolphins kind of come out of nowhere and present themselves as a team that not only has, you know, just a fantastic roster offensively with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, you know, that showed the potential that it had and it manifested itself. It had some high highs. It had some kind of low lows, but Tua, when he was healthy, seemed to be an adequate quarterback as well to where... They're not the pushover that they were coming into last season. I mean, Tua, you know, he didn't have a coming out party like Josh Allen had in 2020, but he definitely was like he he was a good he was a good ass quarterback. And they have Jalen Ramsey now. Like, I mean, the Dolphins have a roster. Patriots they kind of take the step back. I still don't think they're going to finish in last place. I still think somehow, some way, somebody's going to shit the bed and just not, they're just not going to finish in last place. It's going to be crazy. I don't know how the fuck is going to happen, but it's going to happen. Um, Cause you know, they, they more or less didn't make any waves. Um, but you know, you just, you just never know with them. Cause they have by far the shittiest roster, but they still have Bill Belichick. They're still going to win some games. They really shouldn't. Um, and they're probably going to lose some games they shouldn't do either. 
Um, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, of course, the Jets, obviously, they had a massive offseason. Aaron Rodgers is now a Jet. And so the discrepancy between quarterbacks is is a lot smaller now, at least, uh, or it's not quite as, as um, glaring as it used to be, right? Um, because prior to, you know, this season, you know, at the beginning of the last season, Josh Allen was leagues ahead of, you know, anybody else in the division. Now, I still think he is definitely the best quarterback in the division, but you have Aaron Rodgers, who is going to have Garrett Wilson, who is going to have Brees Hall, who is going to have a a very good defense. I mean, the Dolphins, Bills, and the Jets, top to bottom, I mean, those rosters are fire. I mean, those rosters are amazing. And, you know, in the years past, the Bills in 2020, 2021, and 2023, or in 2022, sorry, they had the clear favorite pick, in my opinion, to win their division. Just the quarterback, they had the best quarterback, and their roster was either just as good, if not better, than everybody else in their division, hands down. Now, I don't think that's the case. I think you could make an argument that the Jets have a better roster, Dolphins have a better roster. Obviously, the quarterback is the one deciding factor. The Chiefs did not have a very good roster last year, yet they won the fucking Super Bowl. So that's, you know, that that, that is a thing. That is something to think about, right? And that's what makes football annoying sometimes when you're a team that doesn't have a good quarterback. But a thing that makes football great when you do have a team with a good quarterback, right? I mean, they, they literally... They're amazing. Um, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do breaking the season into four segments. The first four games, the next four games, the next four games after that, and then the final five games. Um, so they start off the season Monday night, 9-11, September 11th, against Aaron Rodgers in New York. In what will be surely a very hyped up emotional game, Aaron Rodgers' first game as a Jet, <laughs> you know, 22 year anniversary or whatever of, you know, the 9 11 tragedy and the politics behind that, whatever. And so, you know, this, it was. The same thing happened last year and the bills absolutely beat the brakes off of the rams so it makes you like think like is the same thing gonna happen i don't know i don't know because you know the bills were kind of going in kind of people thought they might be a little overrated and they look like absolute gangbusters the first two games against two pretty good opponents is the same thing gonna happen here i i don't know i don't know we'll see um i think there's a good chance because you uh, go to the Jets right on Monday night against Aaron Rodgers and a whole new cast of characters. If there's ever a game where you just are able to get in on your own merit, that's it, in my opinion. Um, just because it wouldn't surprise me if the Jets have a slow start. But then you go home opener against the Raiders, led by Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> uh, and then you go to Washington to play the good old commanders who are who the fuck is their quarterback right now like are they really are they really running with there's no way they still have Carson Wentz still yeah they've got Sam Howell and Jacoby Brissett really really uh, and then you also have the the Dolphins um, at home rounding up the first four games so in my opinion, you know, none of these teams are downright trash, right? There's no Houston Texans squad here. There is no, you know, um, D-list team, Chicago Bears top five picking team, right? They're all relatively at least average to good teams. Um, and you got two divisional games in here. This is, you know, a pretty tough stretch to start the season off. But it's also a stretch to start the season off. You don't know how any of these teams are going to play. Year to year, the NFL is always different. There's always a team that is going to be so much better or so much worse year to year. Uh, it, it just happens. 
right? Like, people thought the Raiders were going to be a good team last year because they made the playoffs with, you know, out Devontae Adams and without Josh Jacobs being fantastic. And then they go like seven and 10 afterwards. Like, what the fuck? Who, who, who would have expected that, right? Um, and now they have Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, which seems to be a downgrade, but you never know. They might actually be good. Um, and, you know, Washington looks like shit on paper and they look like mediocre garbage. I think they will be mediocre garbage. I think they're destined for like six to eight wins uh, again. But I don't know. I mean, you have a hodgepodge here. Two divisional games, two home games, two road games. I think the Bills, I think they go 3-1 and one in this stretch. Um, historically, the Bills have been a kind of a streaky team at the end of the season. So uh, I, th- I think they'll go 3-1 and one, these first four. Uh, although 2-2 two and two is, is not too unrealistic um, because, I mean, the Dolphins and Jets, I mean, these are the, – it's the NFL. Anybody can beat anybody, but let's be real here. Um, these are all four pretty formidable opponents with the exception of Washington just based on their quarterback. I mean, oh, God. Um, but they do have Riverboat Ron, so it's like, uh, I don't know. Um, but I like them to go 3-1 and one in this stretch. I do. I do. I, I would say if they were to lose a game, though, you know, emotionally, I want to say the Jets, but how much does that really matter? I don't know. Tell that to the Rams last year. Um, but if we're talking like overall roster, the Dolphins, with if two is playing, could be kind of fire. I don't know. Kicking off in London, though, to start the next four game stretch, you got London game against the Jags and Trevor Lawrence, who have definitely you know, assumed the role of a quite a, a good team. Um, New York Giants, another playoff team from last year that nobody really saw coming. Then you got the New England Patriots, and then you got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, you're home to the Giants. You're home to the Bucks. Uh, you are away to the Patriots, and obviously you're playing in London, which I think is technically a road game. I don't know how they do that. Um, this stretch, in my opinion, is considerably easier uh, than the previous stretch. Me personally, uh, I do like tr- uh, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I don't. I'm not gonna put him in the Herbert tier yet. Um, like the tier two, I think he's still in tier three. Uh, I did like what he showed me down the stretch as well as in the playoffs. Um, I think he's just a bit below. I think he's like on Prescottian level, but he could really ascend. You know, he's only had one year. I mean, he was one year horrible, one year pretty good, right? So I'll kind of temper my my expectations um, for the Jacks. They played in the, the AFC South. Um, they had some games where they played well. They had some games where they were fucking terrible last year. Um, they did bring in some more talent for Lawrence, so that is something to, you know, be heady of. And they did win a playoff game, albeit against the Chargers, who are snake bitten and did not fire their coach. I can't believe that. It's amazing to me. Um, but I would say this is a considerably easier stretch of games um, than the, the first four. That being said. I want to be realistic here. I can totally see the Bills dropping one of these games somewhere, right? Um, I have a hard time thinking they will lose to either Tampa or New England just based on how they play those teams. Um, Tampa is a Thursday night game, but, you know, the Patriots... I don't know. I mean, if you're a fence sitter like me, you can really draw it up and be like, ooh, this could happen or that could happen. Yeah, I still like 3-1, and one, although I really, really could see 4-0 and oh here because the Bills are better than all of these teams definitively, without a doubt, uh, especially when you look at quarterbacks. That's when it's like, whoa, whoa, um, because I, I don't give a fuck about Daniel Jones. I do not buy Daniel Jones. I think he had his best game of his career, the best game he'll ever have, week of the wild card round against the Vikings. Uh, 
I just can't see him replicating it. I just can't. I just can't see it. Um, so, but I, I think the Bills will go three and one. But four and zero is definitely not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, and then you follow that up. Next four game stretch gets a little sussy, man. This this one is is on its Kendrick Lamar giving a run for its money type shit, uh, where you have at Cincinnati. I will be in attendance for that game. Very much looking forward to that. Then you also have in the Denver Broncos on Monday night. Then you get to host the Jets 4 p.m. game against Aaron Rodgers again. And then you get to go to Philly for another 4 p.m. game. So you have four straight more or less primetime games, but four straight non-1 p.m. games, uh, high-profile games. You know, the two games that are not 8 p.m., Sunday and Monday night, respectively, are East Coast games <laughs> that are just being played at 4 o'clock. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to hopefully going to that Eagles game. That would be f- pretty awesome. Um, but obviously, the Eagles were in the Super Bowl last year. Hello. Uh, the Jets were, you know, the talk of the talk. Aaron Rodgers, enough said. Broncos were terrible last year, but they have Sean Payton now, which I legitimately think will make a difference. They will be better. They can't be worse. And then, of course, the Bengals have Joe Burrow. This is a very tough stretch. Very, very tough stretch. Very, very tough stretch. Um, You know, three and one seems excessive, dude. (laughs) Three and one seems excessive. Two and two seems pretty realistic. Um... 4-0 4-0 and 0-4, and 0 and 4, get over yourself. You know, if the Bills somehow lost, like, a game unexpectedly to, like, the Bucks or the Patriots before, maybe people would be like, oh, they're going to lose these next four games because these teams are blah, 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 You can build a – in football, you can totally build it. You can build a narrative so easily. Like, don't even get me fucking started. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah, wow. Um, but they do end up getting their bye after the Eagles um, game. But – Sheesh, you got two road games against two of the teams that were in the final four. And then the two home games are against two teams that, yes, weren't in the playoffs last year, but have great quarterbacks. Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers are definitively great quarterbacks who have whole new regimes that I don't think will allow you to have a lot of validity to their work from last season that would make you think like, eh, they're not that great, right? Because Russell Wilson had his worst year. He was awful last year. Aaron Rodgers was pretty mediocre last year. But I don't think either of those quarterbacks are reflective of that for their entire career, obviously. But just in general, I think they both will be better than they were the year before. Um, so I'm going to say the Bills go 2-2 two and two here. Um, that's tough. That is a tough stretch. Uh, their starting stretch and then this stretch is, is tough. Uh, but I'm going to say two and two. Then they get their week 13 by. And then they have another pretty tough stretch. These final five games, bro. I mean, the Bills have, again, it, it appears to be tough looking at it from how we view the teams last season. But, I mean, really, if you just look at the quarterbacks the Bills have got to play, I mean, because uh, you got to place the Kansas City Chiefs coming out of the bye. 4 p.m. game, another one of those. You've got Dallas, another 4 p.m. game. Uh, you're playing in Arrowhead a fucking gen, by the way. Like, when was the last time the Bills played at home? I know it's, you know, the playoffs throw them out the window because it's, you know, the playoffs are their own basis. But, like, the regular season two, I mean, those are supposed to be, like, planned. Right, the Bills haven't played at home to Kansas City since twenty fucking twenty. Like, get the fuck out of here. Twenty twenty regular season, they played like five times since then. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, But they get home to the Cowboys in a four p.m. game. So again, basically a prime time game on the East Coast. Um, Then you get a Saturday night game at SoFi to play the Chargers and Justin Herbert, Uh, and then you get. Uh, New England at home and Miami in Miami in week 18. Like it's, it's hard, dude. Part of me wants to say the bills can string off like a five game winning streak to end the season, which they totally could. I mean, they've beaten all of these teams. There's not a team the bills cannot beat. Um, 
yeah, they just they can beat anybody in the regular season for sure. Um, they are of that echelon. They have been of that echelon. But goddamn, I mean, shit. Even Super Bowl winning teams are going to lose to good teams. It just happens, you know. Um, and this five game stretch is brutal. It's brutal, and the AFC is tough, right? Because I mean, you look at these five teams, and you know, all but the Patriots were playoff teams last year, and you have to think that they were probably going to be better. I think you know one of them is going to regress. It always happens. It wouldn't surprise me if the Chargers, you know, fell back into like that nine or eight win team that somehow missed the playoffs. I.e., you know, the Raiders of this past year, the Vikings the year before that, and so on. It happens every year. But it, it's a brutal fucking schedule, dude. It's hard. Um, you know, if the Bills only won two games in this five stretch in this game of five, I'll be shocked. But like. Given who they're playing, like, you know, um, the Bills fan in me, knowing how streaky this team is, like, if it's if their backs are against the wall, like, let's say, you know, week 15 going into game 14, they are 7-6. and six. They just lost to the Chiefs, and they've got to win the next four games against – the Cowboys, the Chargers, the Patriots, the Dolphins. I think they could do it and finish eleven and six. Um, I, I am confident in that. However, I mean, goddamn, bro. I mean, this is this is tough. This is not easy, you know. And you know, it's all about when you play these teams too. But I'm looking forward to it, man. Because last year and the years past, I feel like the Bills have kind of played a lot of really good teams early in the season. Not as many tough games later in the season. Um, you know, last year they played the Ravens, they played, um, the Chiefs, they played the Dolphins at one point, you know, good ass teams, playoff teams early in the season, right? They didn't play a lot of really good teams at the end of the season, except for the Bengals, people say, and I guess the Dolphins, but, you know, the Dolphins were kind of starting to fall, unravel there. And also, you know, the Bengals, they didn't even get to play them. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I'm excited for that. Uh, but honestly, I mean, I think I think three and two is a is a pretty reasonable expectation to set. You know, the two best teams of this bunch, probably the Chiefs and the Cowboys. So let's say they lose those two teams. Doubt that, and then they beat up on the Chargers, Patriots, and Dolphins. Feasible. But any other combination is just as real, you know? Um, but I, I say they go three and two in this stretch. Um, and so that rounds at what? Three and so you got three and one, three and one, two and two, and three and two. So that leaves us with 11 and six. Yeah, I think that leaves us at 11 and six. Um, which, you know, say, say what you want about that record. We don't know what that could get you, you know, 11 and six could get you a wild card spot in the AFC East this year. 11 and six could get you the three seed this year. It could get you the two seed this year. You just don't know. The AFC is a madhouse. It's a fucking madhouse. And the bills have a very tough Tough schedule. Um, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Because, I mean, I'm looking at this. They also don't get a buy until week 13. Are you kidding me? Second to last week to get a buy? Woo! Because, I mean, outside of, like, the Patriots, but really the Patriots, Bucks, and Washington, and maybe Las Vegas, you've got what I assume to be eight to nine win bare minimum teams and up, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Nobody could have predicted the Rams to fall apart. Like they did last year, you know, injuries, it happens. So one of these teams may, um, but 11 and six, I think that's safe, man. I think, you know, they have Josh Allen 
And knock on wood, as long as he doesn't get hurt and banged up and something that you just can't account for or predict, as long as that doesn't happen, I don't see it, any reason why the Bills can't, you know, go 11. And I can't say they're going to win the division, though, dude, because it's a fucking doghouse. It, 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 dog fight, sorry. Um, I'm thinking 11 and 6, though. Uh, I'm expecting, you know, another big season from Josh. And I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to what should be a very, very exciting season. Because there are a number of teams on here that you just don't know. You, Dolphins, if Tua plays, I know the concussions and this and that. But showing what they were able to do with Hill and with Waddle, I mean, you just don't know. You know what I mean? Chargers, that seems like a team that could take a step back. Cowboys, another team that could take a step back. But you, you still got the Chiefs. The Eagles, who, I mean, good God, how could you not pick them as the heavyweight? I mean, they have to be the runaway, cha they have to be the runaway favorites in the NFC. I'm sorry. I, I, I get the 49ers, but, like, what the fuck? How could you not? You know? Jets, Aaron Rodgers, hello. Broncos, Sean Payton, Russell Wilson. They got to be better than they were before. Bengals, Joe Burrow, hello. I mean, really, the only games that I would bet my house on, <laughs> the Bills win, is, like, the Commanders... In the Bucks, and even the Bucks is a Thursday night game, which those are always weird. I don't know. I don't know. I really am looking forward to to, to listening back to this later um, down the road, just to see where where my headspace is at. Because, I mean, man, what the fuck are the Raiders going to be this year? What the fuck are the Washington Commanders going to be this year? I mean, those both of those teams scream like eight-win purgatory. But, like, what about the Giants? I mean, are they going to take a step back? Are they going to take a step forward? Did they peak? They could have. They may well. They may have peaked. I don't know. I don't know. I'm. I will say this though. Eleven and six. Um, I think that should make the playoffs for sure. Will that win the division? I'm gonna err on the side of continuity. That's one thing the Bills have got going for them, and I've said it time in and time out. Um, I think that continuity is valuable. So I think the Bills will win the AFC East. However, I'm not nearly as confident in it as I was in years past, where you know last year the Bills. Despite being in a dogfight towards the end there, and they were, man, dead ass until the Dolphins just fell apart. They won the AFC East by four and a half games. <laughs> and the year before, they only won it by one game. But this year, I feel like that those three straight years of uh, AFC East crowns, it could be up for grabs. That's all I'm going to say. I still think they're going to do it. But if there was a, a season since Josh Allen has ascended, has pushed the Bills into the S tier of NFL teams, I think this is the year that somebody dethrones the Bills. Who will it be? Hopefully nobody. Hopefully nobody. But I'm going with 11-6. and six. Josh Allen, you're great. Hopefully Von Miller comes back and is able to stay healthy.